Hello and welcome to the second episode of AKO TV. I'm Alex Garmston. And I'm Holly Moore. And today we're presenting from our technical workshop here at our head office in Oswestry. Uh, the technical workshop is used for expert in installer training and training electricians and fire safety awareness courses. Um, it's a great area to showcase our products and use the live smoke chamber. But this isn't just the only area at our head office that can be used for training. We have the flexible meeting room, the breakout area and the auditorium. Here's a short clip that will show you around our facilities uh, and show you what our head office has to offer. We have Why Echo TV and the creation of the studio with Neil Hooper and Paul White. Then we'll take a look at the world of work where we'll receive some careers advice and guidance with some members of the Echo team. Then we have an interview with Alan Lewis, the co-founder of Adrenaline Sporting Events. And lastly, we'll answer one of your frequently asked questions, where do I fit a carbon monoxide alarm? Now I'll hand over to our Managing Director, Neil Hooper, who's going to tell us why we decided to create Echo TV. And then we'll speak to Paul White, our IT specialist, who's going to give us a tour of the ACO TV studio and give us an insight into the technology that's used to create an episode. Probably the first way that ACO established its education and training was through the Handybook. This is now on its fourth iteration and has become the absolute go-to guide for all of our installers, all of our distributors looking for everything with regard to sighting, where you, would, where you would put various alarms, distances apart from each other, which type of sensor you need for each application, regulations, legislation. Everything began with the handy book before we moved on to our expert installer. We wanted to give you an insight into ACO TV. So we're going to show you, or Paul is, Paul White, our IT guru, he's going to take you behind the scenes in a while to show you this studio, everything that we're working with, with regards to cameras, lighting, mixing desks, sound desks, everything that goes in the modern day into turning a, basically a recording like we have here, into a TV piece or a webinar. But to get to where we are today, we wanted to tell you quickly about how ACO has had to change and adapt in this modern world and in a crisis and move away from what would have been our traditional method of communicating with you into this modern era, I suppose. If we go back over the last 10-12 years, 
ACO has traditionally educated and trained our whole supply chain via expert installer. Expert installer has a core module which is CPD certified and indeed is FIA CPD certified and that has now been rolled out to tens of thousands of people right across our supply chain and then fitting around that core module we have a series of individual modules where you can get into more detail into more content to actually establish your knowledge of ACO, its market, the regulations, the legislation, product innovation and of course how to install and utilise those products. We delivered expert installer traditionally around a series of hotel rooms or hiring rooms before we then built our centre of excellence in our previous head office. Our pre previous head office had a centre of excellence that was originally built five years ago and then extended a year later to be able to facilitate around about 3,000 people a year that came to us for training. Since we were lucky enough to move into our new building in November 2019, of course our centre of excellence is dramatically different. We are very, very lucky to have an auditorium seating 100 people, a workshop seating nearly 70 people, a flexible meeting room with 30 to 40 people and a breakout area that can house all of the guests coming for their training at ACO. We also have four mobile units that tour the country every single week delivering training to any part of the UK. We began with three mobile units four years ago and just developed our fourth one to move into smaller spaces around the country rather than being opening up to double width. That was launched last year. So we're currently standing in our new revamped uh, mobile training unit. Uh, we're actually at our head office here in Oswald Street. So the unit's been revamped. Uh, it's had a bit of a colour change uh, to freshen it up, uh, looking a lot nicer. But also some of the newer products are on the uh, on display within here as well. One of the, one of which is the uh, SmartLink Gateway, which was launched early this year. So we, as specification managers, we generally take them to the electrical wholesale network and within the housing associations, basically get to give face-to-face -face training to uh, to those people, basically giving our updates on the uh, regulations, British standards, uh, siting and installation uh, requirements and again, an update on some of the new, new technologies. So the mobile unit is, is, is great to take into, uh, into the field. Uh, yeah, it has a presence, you know, there, um, some people have used it within uh, city centres, town centres. It does attract people towards it. It's a, it's a very good looking unit. Again, with all the products on here, it's just a really good tool to be able to, uh, to go, go and uh, do what we need to do. The other unit is just a smaller version of this one. So. Um, this, this unit being the size that it is, is quite difficult to get into certain housing association stock, uh, certain city centres and places like that. So it's really important we have this mobile unit because it gets us face to face with the customers. We do have training events up here in Oswald Street, but uh, for some it is too far or it's just un they're unable to uh, come to us. So it's great to be able to take it to them on their car park, on their territory. Uh, we get a lot of interaction with, with them uh, with doing that um, and, and a good, good engagement. Of course, over the last 12 months, we haven't been able to bring people here to our centre of excellence to take our mobile units around the country. We've had to deliver our education and training through the medium of the webinar. Hello and welcome to today's CPD accredited expert installer webinar. My name is Andy Speak, I'll be the host for today's webinar um, and we're going to be doing the core module.
we refer to this training session as the core, is when we first started rolling out training, there was a core set of training modules everybody was asking for. So we've now compiled this into one central um, session and that's what we're gonna be delivering today. Our webinar started a year ago as COVID-19 took hold of this country and we were delighted to be able to hold over 100 last year for around about three to three and a half thousand people led by our national technical manager Andy Speak. Had a great impact on still being able to reach out to the market because our installations have continued, our product sales have continued, people looking for the legislation and regulatory advice from ACO has continued and indeed 2020 was a record year for the company. But moving forward we realised we had to progress again. ACO has always been at the forefront of technology, quality service, innovation and of course education. So how do we approach it differently? So we had the mobile units, we have the centre of excellence, we can't use them. We then had webinars. What we decided to do was to move it on again and create our own TV studio. Paul is going to take you through the back of house, essentially establishment of the studio itself with all of the cameras that are looking at me at the moment, all of the lighting, the sound, and of course how he then takes all of this information, this digital information, and produces the images that you see today. And indeed, all of the events that we have ongoing, ACO TV being launched on March the 11th with its very, very first show, and then weekly content every Thursday at two o'clock moving forward from that date. So I'm going to hand over to Paul now, and he's going to show you a very, very rare glimpse into how you put this type of production together. Thank you, Neil. Um, my name is Paul White. I am the IT specialist here at ACO. Um, I've been at ACO for just under a year. Um, I've come from a live events uh, and broadcasting background, so I've brought um, experiences with me, um, which has helped me to order the equipment, um, set up the studio, and, and basically run, run all this stuff. Um, so, if, um, if you'll join me, I'll take you around and show you uh, what equipment we have, how we use it, and how we get to uh, publishing something on ACO TV. Okay, just to run you through how we do our live events and how we record um, various things for ACO TV. Um, we've got our Mac here, um, which you can see a wonderful picture of me on at the moment. Um, this is OBS. Um, software so this is mainly for live broadcasts um, but we do use it quite a bit for recording and um, we tend to use Adobe Premiere and After Effects um, this PC is then linked into this system um, which you can see our lovely Holly if she gives gives us a wave um, she's currently sat in the studio this basically shows us all the live feeds from our various cameras which I'll talk through um, shortly um, we've got the Roland um, eight-way video mixer. So this is basically what you're seeing on here. Um, we can see what's coming up on a camera. So this isn't live at the moment. I'm live currently, um, but we've got the ability to switch over. So we've got Holly <laughs> in the studio and we can switch over to different cameras um, depending on, on what we want to see. Okay, so just over my shoulder, you'll see a Behringer X32 Compact um, sound desk. Um, this is used for controlling all of the microphones um, that we have. Um, we can add in um, as, many, as many microphones as we want. We've got microphone in the ceiling as well, which captures sort of an ambient sound should we need it. Um, Microphone-wise, we tend to use um, Sennheiser EW G4s. Um, you get these quite a bit in the um, live, live industry. Um, all this is then fed into our Sennheiser receivers, which are then sent back out straight into the sound desk. Um, sound desk then transfers all of the data through to the uh, Roland sound desk, sorry, video desk, 
and then straight through into OBS. So as I'm talking now, you'll see the audio signal coming through from my mic. Um, so next, we'll go through the various cameras we have, and then I'll be handing back over to Neil. Okay, so these are the cameras we tend to use. Um, these are NX200s. Um, I have one here, and if we switch over to camera four, Alex has got one over there. Um, we tend to use these for most of our live events, um, mainly due to the ability to have sort of wider shots. Um, we have three of them in the studio at the moment, um, so we can catch different people and everyone can be at a safe distance. Okay, so to take you around the rest of the studio, um, we have two backdrops that we use for different events. We've got our large ACO uh, Smart Link and Home Link background, which you will have seen a few times. This enables us to have sort of three to four people um, at a safe distance around the studio. Um, we can then also switch over to our standard ACO Home Link um, background. Again, this is literally used for sort of smaller events. Um, around the studio, we've got various lighting. We've got these RE uh, red headlights, which they're currently tungsten lights. Um, they're very, very powerful. Um, and when they go, they definitely go with a bang. Um, we've also got um, various LED lights um, around the studio, just so we can try and light up as much as we can. Um, there's no point recording all this and then having a sort of dark background, basically. Um, in the ceiling was the C1 mic that I mentioned earlier. So this can be used for um, capturing sound <laughs> in, the, um, in the studio or for sort of backup in case one of our microphones goes dead. We can literally just switch over to this, um, although you will notice when we do that because you will hear quite a lot of the background noise. Okay, so one of the toughest challenges we've had is getting the equipment onto site. Um, I think because a lot of people are working from home and doing their sort of own thing with media, um, ordering cameras has been a bit of a nightmare. So they've, I think our longest one took about six weeks to arrive. Um, other than that, um, challenges of building the studio is to make sure that we have plenty of power um, and also to make sure that the power sort of runs independently. So we've got the lighting running on its own circuit, we've got the cameras running on their own circuit and all the media equipment running on their own circuits. Um, so that if a light does go, um, and they do, um, it doesn't wipe out the rest of the studio. So we can always recover if we found that um, we've, we've got a fault with the light um, or, or anything else. Okay, so just above me, you'll see the in-ceiling speakers. These are monitor audio speakers. Um, we tend to use these for live events. So if there's live questions and answers on a webinar, um, people can actually speak through. We'll be able to hear them in the studio. Um, we can zone them off as well. So we've got zone one here, zone two, to the other side of the studio and zone three just above my desk so I can hear any sort of playback um, or any other noise coming through. Okay, so I think that sums up most of the equipment that we have in the studio. Um, the only things that we didn't mention were the two screens you may have seen. Um, so we've got the 85 inch screen that we use for our live events. Um, so the presenters are able to see themselves. Uh, and we also have the 49 inch screen, which we use as a kind of comfort monitor and um, teleprompting monitor. Um, so I suppose the last thing for me to do now is to uh, fade myself out and pass you back to Neil. So thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. I'm going to show you to, to finish off this segment, what it actually looks like when you're this side of the camera. I'm really proud of all of my colleagues that have been involved with this because this is a very, very unusual experience taking all of us way out of our comfort zone. So as I'm seated here at the moment, you can see that we've got a very, very bright light over here. There are two of them. You've got another one here. If that's not bad enough, you can see there are two large lights and you can see yourself on this huge screen as you're actually speaking. 
and recording a program. There's another light here, a different angle of yourself on the screen there. <laughs> then, you've <got laughs> then you've got Alex with the clapboard and you can see another light. So as you're seated here, you're trying to talk into a camera and being relaxed or as relaxed as you can be and everything is looking at you like this. So thank you to all my colleagues who've got over this. I'd particularly like to thank the two people who are over here at the moment. You can see Alex and Paul over there. You've seen that Paul segment and, and Alex has been on Eco TV quite regularly. Everything that you see here has been put together purely by our colleagues, which I'm very, very proud of. We've had Matt Powell involved a lot as well, Matt Small, Holly, all of our colleagues, I'd really like to, to pay tribute to them for everything that they've worked on to put ACO TV together. I hope you've enjoyed the back of scenes tour with Paul and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. It was great to hear from Neil Hooper, our Managing Director, about ACO TV and why it was created uh, and the aims and, and, and benefits of that. Um, as well as hearing from Paul White, our IT specialist, who's, who's only been here just under a year, uh, but has developed a great TV studio that we've used for live webinars, events, and, and for the episodes you're watching now. Um, so with that in mind, we're going to go back to our first live event of this year and look at some footage from behind the scenes. Very warm welcome to our first live webinar of 2021, The Smarter Way to Compliance. All the sessions will revolve solely around the day-to-day -day challenges of achieving compliance and how technology can support you now and in the future. Good afternoon everybody. As always, many thanks for taking the time to join us at your busy days. Please put the questions through the chat box. We will answer as many as we can as the afternoon goes on. How are you doing, David? Are you okay? Uh, when you use technology, it's really interesting how you can actually get empower residents to be involved, which answers quite a lot of the consumer engagement paper that's out there. I don't know, it's, it's, it's an interesting area of technology and engaging residents in different ways, isn't it? But also making sure that residents always kept safe and actually they save lives. Air Course Product Development Manager, Michael Wright, will run through a session on how technology can support you, including a live demonstration of the SmartLink Gateway. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks again for, for joining us here today, uh, the Smarter Way to Compliance, our, uh, our event this afternoon. So a massive thank you to yourself, Gavin, and Alistair for joining us this afternoon. And I really appreciate you uh, jumping in and, um, and answering the questions as you have. It's been really, really good. So yeah, please, thank you very much for joining us today. Please carry on the conversation and uh, it's been a pleasure. All the best. At ACO, we are proud and passionate about supporting education and this week we supported Virtual Careers Live. This event is hosted by the Careers Enterprise Company, the Shropshire Chamber and Shrewsbury Colleges Group. The event aims to provide young people with an insight into the different business sectors, allowing them to gain some essential careers guidance. As part of this at ACO, we created an in-depth look into the various departments in our company, using PowerPoint presentations and a careers video. The video covers various job roles at ACO, apprenticeships, colleagues development and the importance of values and much more. Let's take a look at this video and see how we can inspire young people and provide them with a better understanding of business and the roles that might suit them. I'm part of a group of six that work in finance and we manage the sales ledger, purchase ledger and credit control aspects of the business. 
Um, our jobs are very varied, but also very heavy in customer relations. We can take over 300 calls in a week, um, as well as processing supplier invoices and uh, collecting outstanding debt. My job entails answering phone calls from members of the public, whether they've got any issues they have with battery alarms, whether it be a change of battery, or it may be just down to maintenance of the alarms. So I can go through on how to change the alarms and obviously to maintain them, maybe just getting a hoover and just giving them a vacuum. The other people I also speak to are electrical contractors. So they may have had issues with the wiring problems, house coding, or even siting. So it's just a general overview on where to fit and site our alarms. So I'm a marketing executive, so I work with the rest of the marketing department to implement ACO's marketing activities. Um, the job role's really varied and no two days are the same. I monitor the marketing inbox to respond to any internal and external inquiries. I write press releases and case studies and I plan social media posts, mostly for Twitter and LinkedIn. We also work as a team to share ideas and to make sure the work we produce is of a high standard. Our main job is delivering alarms to bring safer homes to the community. So with that we have several different duties that are involved. It goes from picking orders to packing orders uh, palletising orders which were quite large and also taking off deliveries and putting deliveries away uh, at the end of the shift. We do this by being driven, accurate, enthusiastic to deliver as much as possible, as often as possible, as accurately as possible. We also share knowledge, collaborate and be open-minded to help our strengths and weaknesses. Day to day I answer the phones uh, to wholesalers and end users. I process orders for the different wholesalers as well. Create cases for wholesalers if they have any issues, we create it on our CRM system. We can work with them, see investigate it through the company, see what's happened, see if it's a career issue or ours. We also do uh, general admin duties, um, so filing from the previous day's orders. Uh, we print off the sales and inquiries emails, um, make sure all of them are applied to and all the orders are printed off correctly. Uh, we also do a movement sheet as well where we get all the managers movements uh, for the week make sure they're all inputted correctly. We work with an external um, operations team to get the mobile units out across the country uh, to train electricians and installers uh, free of charge all over the UK. This um, ensures the safer communities. It makes sure that all our electricians and installers are doing it all correctly um, and everyone's um, got a safe property. I'm a communications executive here at ACO, part of the IT and data services team. My day-to-day -day tasks include helping people with support tickets for IT. So if someone has an issue with their computer, I will go and assist them with that. Generally these days that would be actually virtual via Quick Assist or Teams sharing screen and taking control of someone else's computer, so virtual, virtual assistance as it were. Other tasks that I carry out daily would be data management, so ensuring that all of the data we store about our customers is secure and it's correct. I also manage the CRM system and I'm currently developing a new CRM system that will be released next month. A CRM system is a customer relationship management system for storing data about our expert installers and also for marketing automation tools. My, my role entails um, product development, so part of the product development team um, we're looking at any new ways we can innovate and, and, and develop our products to help meet the needs of our, our customers. So we're in correspondence with them, we're taking input, taking their feedback on, on, on our products and their requirements. Um, but not only them, we're working across uh, external teams as well and our internal technical team to really look at yeah, any ways we can improve the products. Um, once we have all our information gathered together, we're then corresponding with our, our R&D and engineering teams in Shannon. In, in Ireland where all our products are manufactured uh, and working very closely with them to bring the products to fruition and then um, yeah launch them into the into the market so quite a variety that we get involved in. I really enjoyed my apprenticeship here at AK. Um, I have previously attended weekly classes an external training provider um, which has allowed me to get my level 2 and level 3 AAT qualification which is internationally recognised. Um, I've also had 12 weekly meetings with my manager and training provider as well as my tutor to um, track progress and um, 
celebrate rec recent accomplishments um, as well as doing a portfolio. The benefits of an apprenticeship, I've gained qualifications while still getting to work um, alongside a great team here at ACO, they've all supported me really well. I've also gained extra qualifications on top of the apprenticeship. Um, I gained an EDA uh, customer service. ACO are really proud to develop their team members throughout their careers at ACO. Um, I'm near the end of my uh, completion, so I'm quite excited to see where my future um, goes in my career at ACO. I've been with ACO now for over 25 years, so I've seen it start from the beginning. The three things that ACO do are quality, innovation and service, which is everything that you need to know about ACO and how it's all grown. Everything has changed from the buildings to the products, so we pride ourselves as market leaders in smoke and CO. So I've been at ACO just over a month now and so far it's been a really positive experience. I had a really detailed induction um, where I got to learn about ACO's values, processes and products and that gave me the confidence to start my role knowing that I knew as much about the company as I could. Everyone here has been really welcoming and have made me feel at home. So I've done a lot of training at ACO so far. So after two months of joining the company, I went through my counter balance forklift training, um, V&A man up training, and ride on pallet training, which is essential for taking deliveries and palletizing deliveries and moving stuff around the warehouse. So we also use CRM, which we log our mistakes so we're being as accurate as possible. Um, and we also do our return deliveries on there. We've had a lot of other in-house training for the warehouse. So using a system called Daytown, which is what we do to input our um, orders that we've picked. Um, also using things sites like UPN to send pallets to the correct place and little bits just by using the pallet wrap machines, which is essential really to get on with the job. Um, so yeah, it's been really good to have this kind of level of support and given a chance to grow so early on as being at the company. Um, I've also been asked to be responsible for booking in certain pallets with one of our local delivery firms, which has been really nice as well. In the next five years, I can see us establishing ourselves within the market of IoT due to our recent procurement of the company Homelink. IoT is the internet of things and allows products that we put in the home communicate with cloud services such as the online portal. The significance of moving into the connected home will bring exponential growth to the company, both in the private and in the public sector. This exponential growth will actually allow us to employ people internally as well as externally hopefully more apprenticeships too. Apprenticeships are a great way to grow and support young people in the local community. Yeah, so the values at ACO are um, uh, really everything that, 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 that we're founded on really. So um, it started off, it's a really good thing that everybody in the company had input in, into that. So um, every single person was able to really shape that and say, what do we want our collective values to be? So um, it, it's really then the point of reference for everybody within within the company, all our colleagues that um, uh, can go back to that and say, well, that's how you know that's how we want the company to to operate and and to look. So um, fr from our perspective, to give that sort of an example, really, like if you look at teamwork, one of the values um, vital for us. So we're you know we don't have all the answers, um, certainly not. So our our point is then we need to work across lots of different teams. Um, I mentioned like the external team, technical teams to get input on, on products. And then there's very much teamwork back with um, uh, the R&D and engineering teams in Shannon. So we're, we're sort of meshing all that together through that, that, that one value, um, which is great. One of our values is, is safer communities. And really that's, I suppose, the fundamental of, of, of what we're trying to do. So, you know, we are a manufacturer of, of life safety products. Um, fire alarms, carbon monoxide alarms, uh, and for us, in, in, in terms of product development, we want to make the very safest, very best product we can, so that ultimately, you know, it's going to give that safety and that protection to the, to the person living in that, in that property. So, yeah, it's a very, very fundamental basis uh, that, that everything's built on, and then, you know, we can, we can bring out new technologies and new advancements to, to just enhance that further and further, but, yeah, that's definitely the the overriding factor uh, running through it all. The 
so the team development days have been have been great really so it's you know we're very lucky to to have them um and it's been really it's been something personally for me where um you have a, a set day and a, and a space to really expand your knowledge in, in that as re, uh, um, sort of around your, your, your areas of, of team development, um, bringing extra skills, um, extra things you can implement and, and, and try, um, and having that, that day itself to, to focus on it and, and multiple days um, really does allow you to get into that mindset. Um, and, and, and yeah, we're very lucky to have that, given that opportunity to focus on it. I've been lucky enough to be part of ACO since our first meeting with our external team building facilitator. Um, it's been amazing to see the progress um, and the strength and relationships that have developed through team building um, and in turn that has supported the relationships that we've developed and also team building's positively impacted our departmental goals as well as the goals of the wider company. Our CSR initiative, Acre in the Community, is, is really how we give back to wider communities that we're, we're directly involved in. So for us as a company, it is, yes, we do obviously, we do sell alarms, you know, fire and CO alarms, but it's much, much bigger than that. Um, and the CSR um, uh, is, is an integral part of everything that, that, that we do. Um, for me personally, being involved in the volunteering days that we have, so, you know, we're very lucky to be given those days and it, it's great to get that satisfaction to then go and support a local charity or community or actually you know give something back and, and, and make a difference. Um, we've also got charities of the year that, that we run with so you know everybody's got a focus where we can raise funds and again you know give give support to a charity that is you know very much in, in need of it and um, yeah we can all collectively bring ourselves our efforts together and, and, and support that that charity itself so um, yeah, personally, hobby-wise, a lot of cycling, so um, there's lots of cycling events involved in that for, for me, which is, uh, which is great. But, but yeah, as a company, it's, it's, it's an integral part of what we do, and it's great for everybody to be involved in it. ACO volunteer three days a year at your programme to go out and help others. So what I've done in the past is gone to disruption domestic abuse and did lawn cutting, tree cutting. I've also gone to the Royal Shrewsbury Hospital at the Lincoln Davis Centre to upgrade the garden. So yeah, that's what we do. So since starting my marketing career, I've always worked in Shropshire and I've always had an awareness of who ACO are and what they do. I've always been really impressed with the way that they promote their products and services and also the great work that they do with the local communities. So when I saw that they had a job vacancy in the marketing department, I was really keen to apply. ACO are really innovative in the way that they promote their products and services. We've recently launched ACO TV um, and the channel is going to aim to communicate with our customers and our sector in a new way. We've built an on-site studio which is going to allow us to create this content and we also plan on inviting external organisations to become a part of the discussion. So there's lots of benefits here at ACO. Um, we've got a lot offered, not just like the training that we get given, also the other parts that we get with the job. So we have a gym that we can use, which is great. We also have a game rooms we're allowed to use on our lunch break, which is quite fun. Build a bit of extra rapport with teammates. Um, we've got the relaxation room as well, which is really nice. Um, and just general other stuff as well. I started working at ACO almost four years ago as a warehouse operative, picking and packing the orders that were sent down by the internal sales department. Six months later I started working in the technical department as a technical advisor where I would assist installers as well as our regional specification managers out in the field with any issues they may experience when installing the products. Six months after starting my role as a technical services advisor I became an infrastructure technician apprentice allowing me to learn whilst I earn. Almost two years after starting my apprenticeship I had the skills and the knowledge I needed to become an inaugurable member of the communications department. During my time here at ACO, I have, I have acquired several new skills. I have acquired forklift licenses, an MTA in coding and logic, an EDA in customer service, and I'm currently enrolled on 18 self-progression programs. 
So in my short time here, I've um, obtained a whole host of skills and qualifications, qualified level two and level three AAT, um, which could allow me to progress further. Um, I've also achieved a distinction in my EDA customer service module, um, and I'm fully qualified in SAGE. That's helped recently as I've been put into a team where we're integrating a new SAGE system and I've wrote an instruction manual for the wider team. Uh, the training I've received at ACO uh, was a lot more than I expected. I've learnt a lot about the, all the products so I can help everyone that calls in. Um, whenever a new product comes out, I, we get a, a thorough training on it by our product developer manager. Um, when the gateway came out, we got a lot of training on that to make sure all the calls from end users and anyone that had any issues we could um, help and advise on it. So the interview process with ACO was quite unique in the fact that I got to meet the marketing manager, the commercial and finance director and also the managing director, Neil. Um, this showed to me that it's really important for ACO to find the right candidate that fits their values and shares their vision. Um, my advice for anyone applying for a job is to really do your research on the company, find out who they are, what they do and what's important to them. And make sure you apply for positions where you have the skills and experience to fit the job role criteria. Um, so the interview I had here was with the sales manager, the finance and commercial director and the managing director of SBC training. This was really good, I got to see a range of people that worked at ACO and I got to hear Matt's story about how he started as an apprentice and is now a director. Having uh, Colin from SBC there was good as well, I could ask whatever questions I had about the apprenticeship. So the interview I had was based around their values and behaviours. Um, it showed that it was really important to them that they just they wanted a good person as well as a hard worker and that they, they're really proud of de developing their people that work for them. So some of the benefits we get here at AK um, is we have the apprenticeships team. Um, these mainly go into sales and finances as well as other parts of the company. So this makes up 10% of the workforce which is great and it just helps the company grow, get some fresh ideas and new people in. Uh, it's always great to be taken out of your comfort zone as well and being pushed to new challenges, which I think we'll always get at ACO, which is really nice for your own development. So one of the other benefits we have at ACO is our social events. So we have Christmas parties annually, we all get together. Um, we have individual ones as well with our teams, with our managers, like going for curry nights and going bowling. And it's a great time to spend time with people out of work and develop our um, rapport as well outside of work, it's really nice. Yeah, so general tips on, on interviews are um, be, be punctual, you know, show, show up on uh, plenty of time for the, uh, for the interview itself. Um, make sure you're presentable, you know, you, you want to come across as a professional um, appearance when, when you're actually having the, the interview itself. Um, be open, be honest. Um, Ask lots of questions. You know, it's really good to, if we have somebody for interview, that they're showing interest, they're asking questions, they want to find out um, about the particular role or, or, or the company, um, you know, wider information on the company itself. But um, I'd also add into that um, as well, you know, do, do some research beforehand. So if, if you are applying and going for interview with a, with a company, um, research into what they do, you know, and, and, and have some questions lined up around maybe specific areas. Um, that you want to find out a bit more on, on, on the company itself. But um, yeah, preparation is, is, is definitely helpful, but yeah, open, honest, and uh, just be yourself, really. I would recommend an apprenticeship to anybody within an industry where they could have um, support from their employee and training provider. Apprenticeships are a great way to learn on the job, as well as having a steady income if university isn't a path that you'd like to take. Um, so working at ACO is absolutely great. Being part of the market leader is it's fun, it's exciting, and working in a how, uh, warehouse is always something new to do in a day. Everything's changing, it's quite fast paced and keeps your own taste, it's good fun. If you're ever looking for a job, definitely come to ACO. It's a place to be. 
So even though I've only been here a short time, I've had first-hand experience of how much ACO want to nurture and provide development opportunities for their staff. We offer a number of job roles here at ACO, so if you're looking for a new opportunity, keep an eye on our website and social media channels for the latest vacancies. I've really enjoyed my apprenticeship. I'd recommend them to anyone that's not really sure what they want to do post-16 or post-18. Keep an eye on our social media or website to see if we've got any vacancies open at the moment. Um, yeah, I mean, ultimately, I really enjoy working at ACO for everything we get involved in, all, all of the all my colleagues really, you know, everybody that we work with, um, everybody's involved, we're all equal stakeholders in, in, in the business um, and it's an exciting place to be, we're always innovating and developing as a, as a company so yeah, I'd encourage somebody to, to get involved. It was great to hear from our ACO team members there, uh, helping support young people with careers guidance and, and careers advice. Holly, you took part in that video. Can, can you tell me how you feel about supporting young people in education that perhaps struggle to make that decision when leaving school? Yeah, I was really keen to be involved because I remember when I was at school, there was not very much available. It was a quick careers meeting with your head of year. Didn't really get many ideas and I just felt like the next thing to do was go off to college. So to be able to help people that are in that position now, to give them more of an understanding of how much stuff there is actually out there, I think that's really important and something that I wish I'd had as well. Yeah, no, I agree, I agree. I never knew what I wanted to do when I left school either, and I, I agree there wasn't really, you had sort of careers workshops, but I don't think there's a, as much information as you need as a young person yeah. thinking about what career move you want to make next and any, any guidance and support regarding CV, job interviews and, and things like that. Um, for anyone watching that wants more information on, on careers guidance and advice, please go to the Careers Live website. Uh, we'll provide the details at the bottom of the screen now. Uh, we're now going to go to a short break and we'll see you soon.
Earlier this week, our finance and commercial director, Matthew Small, had the chance to catch up with Alan Lewis, who's the co-founder of Adrenaline Sporting Events, who are responsible for such events like the Oster Street 10K. They're going to discuss um, how Adrenaline Sporting Events came about and how they've progressed. Hi and welcome back to ACO TV. I'm Matt Small, Commercial and Finance Director here at ACO and I'm delighted to be joined by Alan Lewis of Adrenaline Sporting Events. After a very successful 10K, Oswestry 10K back in 2019, Alan's got a six events scheduled for 2021. Uh, hi Alan, how you doing? Hello Matt, nice to see you. Nice to see you too. So, um, Adrenaline Sporting Events, talk to us about uh, what, what, why you decided to set it up. So, Adrenaline Sporting Events, um, was set up around seven years ago, uh, not under quite this umbrella, but um, our first event was um, in 2014, and that's the Midnight Ride, so that's our oldest event. Um, and on the back of sort of discussions with local councils and authorities um, asking me to set up Oswestry 10K, it soon uh, sort of become clear that there was going to be more events to follow, so I needed a, a sort of umbrella sort of brand uh, to put all of the events under and um, we come up with adrenaline sporting events so that's uh, kind of where it all started and, and why we've got what we've got. So your background Alan, so, so, so you're, you're an athlete yourself? Yeah so uh, triathlon was my game, um, I used to uh, compete um, more successfully in Olympic distance and sprint uh, distance, I went to the world championships in uh, Beijing in 2011 um, and continued to race a little bit after 2011, but um, when my racing shoes sort of were, were sort of, uh, you know, hung up, um, I then wanted to put um, some events on for other people, um, and that's when the Midnight Ride started, and uh, from there on uh, in, it's been pretty busy, and uh, it's been all about planning and getting things uh, correct for the local area. So you mentioned the midnight ride uh, for our viewers back at uh, back at home or at work. Um, so, so what's the premise? What's the premise behind the midnight ride then? Yeah, so the midnight ride originally used to start from Oswestry uh, at midnight, and we used to go uh, through the night. It was always on a Saturday night as it is now, but we used to finish at the coast. So we used to get the, to the coast for for sunrise, um, have some breakfast, and then drive home. Uh, it was that format for a few years, and. Um, in 2019, we changed the format to a 6.30 start, so leave in daylight and um, come home at midnight, um, which works well because you ride through sunset. Um, it's a real uh, unique experience leaving in the day, um, cycling through hopefully a red sky and um, you know coming back uh, to Aco for uh, a beer and a midnight buffet it kind of works quite well and it's um, it's really well received. Yeah, so you, you've got quite a draw with the, with the Midnight Rider. I believe you got into the into the cycling press uh, a couple of years ago as well. Is that, is yeah, that right? so it was um, in Cycling Weekly, which is a, a, you know, probably the most sort of popular cycling magazine that goes out to about 30,000 um, cyclists each week and it was in their, um, in their must-do rides. Um, so that was quite nice. Um, and we've had, you know, lots of nice feedback over the last sort of seven years. We've had people from the Isle of Wight, London, um, all over the UK coming into Oswestry, spending the weekend here, uh, enjoying the ride, and uh, yeah, and they come back. So I would say a lot of our audience is is repeat audience, and they yeah they come from all over the place. So staying staying with cycling for a minute. Um, obviously, we've talked about the midnight ride, but but it, I guess if we go back to basic grassroots, if we like, uh, talk to me about the, uh, the, the the rippers and the nippers. Yeah, so um, that's a nippers and rippers nippers, is sorry, a nippers um, and rippers. is um, an event that we do uh, free for the community. It's um, all about getting children out and about. It uh, is at dusk, so it gives the children probably their first experience of using lights. Uh, again, it starts in, in, um, in daylight and just finishes just before it gets to dark. Um, we will hopefully run that again in October this year. We run it in Kai Glass uh, in Oswestry, so it's completely closed off just for this event. Um, it's, it's safe, it's nice, and it gets the kids from electronics and gets them into, um, you know, into something that we're passionate about and we believe 
you know, it's a, a really nice pathway for children to, to get involved in. So this year, staying with cycling again, we, we, we've, got a, we've got a couple, couple of uh, additional events that you're putting on. So um, the pedal pushers. So, I mean, slightly different to your other events. This is a, this is a ladies only event. You yeah. Talk, talk to us about the sort of the thinking behind, behind that. So I guess over my time of, of racing and riding uh, bikes at certain events all over the place, I've always felt that there's a bit of a gender gap um, in, in cycling. Um, so I wanted to put on a, uh, a platform for ladies to feel welcome, safe, uh, not intimidated. Um, so I, I come up with the idea of pedal pushes. Um, so that's a ladies only event. It has two distances. Uh, it's going to be here um, at ACO and it's going to be on the 18th of July. So uh, pedal pushes, um, yeah, it's a nice lady only event and um, we're really looking forward to it. Entries are, are coming in really, really well for that. What, what, what's the route for that one then, Alan? So it will be uh, a little bit uh, un undulating uh, as, it, as it is, just from ACO for the first, um, probably first five or six miles, and then it heads out um, over towards Rodney's Pillar, so the, the flat areas of, of, um, of Shropshire, and then they stop for a, uh, you know, a snack, a piece of cake, a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, uh, and then they come back to Osestry. So, um, you know, they'll come through uh, Nuckin, Maysbrook, Maysbury, um, and it's 30 miles or, or 45. So two achievable uh, distances uh, for, for, yeah, for, for ladies to get involved in. And then, then you've got Pedal the Borders as well. Yeah, so Pedal the Borders is a, a new event for 2021. Um, like all of the other events, um, it's got a charity partner. So. Uh, the Midnight Ride and Pedal Pushes will have um, the Movement Centre as their charity partner. Pedal the Borders will have uh, Lincoln Davis as our charity partner. Um, that will go up to the magnific magnificent um, Lake Vermeway. It's 61 miles and um, that is on Sunday the 25th of July. So uh, Lake Vermeway is always um, you know, very popular with cyclists. Um, it's got some challenging hills to get there and then when, once you get there the scenery is absolutely spectacular yeah. uh, again uh, riders will have uh, an opportunity to grab a snack and a, a coffee before uh, heading back uh, to ACO well, the beauty with uh, you know those challenging climbs there's always one to come down as well yes absolutely so we, we, we've talked about road cycling and, uh, and the viewers would, would have noticed behind me that we've also got a, we've got a mountain bike here so a, another another new event for 2021 uh, yeah. the valley burner so Valley Burner um, has got a little bit of everything in it. It's got free events uh, for the children in the morning. We've got um, a partnership with Trailhead, uh, a mountain bike shop over in Shrewsbury. Uh, their shop staff have experience in, in coaching and helping um, children. Um, so we've got some workshops in the morning for free. Then we've got a mini burner for the youth uh, at lunchtime. And then the main uh, event is in the afternoon and that is Valley Burner. Uh, that's a two hours um, lapped uh, challenge um, that's got a bit of everything. It's got single track that's fast through the woods. It's got some switchback climbs um, up, up the hills of the Tanat Valley. Um, and each time the riders uh, complete a lap, they will come through the event arena, uh, which you know, will spur them on to do another lap. Um, promises to be a good atmosphere, um, probably few people will have some beers maybe hopefully the sun will be shining and um yeah so valley burn is on the 28th of august so yeah looking so forward to that august bank holiday then it is yeah, so yeah, yeah. So, yeah no doubt so people can recover <laughs> on the sunday on indeed the monday. yeah yeah no, no need to come back to work with the bumps and bruises yeah exactly um so moving away moving away from the cycling and, and on to on, on to the running we've got the trains there and, and, and indeed the medal from that that austria 10k back in in 2019 so 2021 um Austria 10K is back. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what can we expect from the, uh, the, the 10K this year? So we're, we're going to be partnering up with Hope House again. Um, the, route will, um, the route will pass Hope House. Um, in 2019, it was really uh, well received, um, you know, passing through Hope House, getting the children involved so that the, the children that have care at Hope House can come out. They can be part of the day without having to, to move away from the centre. Um, so that's an important part. We've got a new Wilfred Owen medal um, for 2021 that, again, was well received in 2019. 
the course has been signed off uh, by the, um, the governing body of course measurements. And um, yeah, we're hoping to you know, build on 2019, have a few more runners involved. Um, numbers, uh, again, after the sunshine at the weekend have, have really come in this week. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to Oswestry 10K. Um, it's our, I guess, our sort of main event, really. It's, it's the event that has the most numbers. Um, we closed down seven miles of roads for two and a half hours, so it's, it's quite an operation. But uh, again, you know, it's something that we're really passionate about. Uh, it's good for the community, good for the charity, and um, it gives something um, for, for people to aim for. And you know, a, a fantastic event. Um, you know, I, I know there was a team of us from here at ACO in, in, in 2019, and being in the thick of it in the main street of Oswestry with no cars, and then the, the, the making our way down I into the country and, and then up the hills. <laughs> uh, and you know, I, I was quite, I was quite relieved when when I passed through uh, through Hope House. The kids were out there handing out uh, the, uh, the, the the glasses of water, which was very much needed before before we headed back into Oswestry. So it was my first 10K, and um, yeah, I, I'm sure <laughs> we'll go into another one, knowing knowing, knowing what what there is what there is to do. Um, so for, for for those that you know that are familiar with uh, you know the 10K already, th th there's also another event that you've got in, in, in the running calendar this year in in Bryn Canal Running Festival. So yeah, um, sl a slightly different concept from the 10K. Different concept because it's uh, in a private estate, um, so there's no road closures, there's no time pressures. Um, but what we wanted to do with that one was, you know, if people were just dipping their toe into into running, we wanted to give them a, a smaller distance to um, to aim for. So, Brinken Running Festival on the fourth of July will have a five k option. Um, if people are, are past the five k, then it does have a ten k option. And if people are past the 10K and looking to go, um, you know, for half marathon, marathon distance, then Brinken will offer uh, runners a 20K option. Um, it's in absolutely stunning scenery um, at Brinken uh, The Brinken um, estate is, is normally closed. It's a private estate. So for one day only, we, you know, we're really privileged and honoured to have this opportunity to have runners um, there and uh, we're partnering up with the Movement Centre um, uh, for that one. And again, it just, it, you know, it's, uh, it's a great opportunity for everyone to be involved. And in terms of sort of the terrain of the Bryn Canal, uh, uh, how, how, how yeah, does that vary? Yeah, so I, I run Bryn Canal 5K this morning. It was absolutely stunning, even though there was low-lying low fog. Um, it's, it's a real nice mixture of, um, I guess, well-maintained uh, fields. Um, some single track and um, some four wheel track. Um, so it's soft underfoot, it's not too technical. And um, there's a small incline or false flat in a few places. So, you know, it offers a bit of everything really. Uh, but the scenery will get everybody around. Again, we will marshal um, this area so there'll be encouragement there, like there is with all of our events. So you won't be left alone. So six events, six events for 2021. You know, we're very fortunate uh, here in Oswestry Street to be surrounded by beautiful countryside and you know, go in any direction you yeah. know, for, for a mile and, and we're in the country. So, you know, there really is, there really is something for everyone, whether, mm. you know, you, you're starting off or, you know, you, you're a seasoned pro. What, what, what sort of advice and support are drilling supports um, a, able to offer, you know, someone looking to get in, I, into, you know, cycling or running? Yeah, I mean, the... Um the website has training plans on, on, on it for people to follow. Um, I guess if you're thinking about any events, then I'm a, a true believer in you can achieve what you want to achieve. I guess it's all about preparation. If you have some consistency in your training, um, you know, take small steps and build it up sensibly. Don't go um, at it full tilt from, from the word go. Build up sensibly and you can really achieve what you want to achieve. If you think, um, 5k is a nice distance and you've got Bryn Kinnell. if you want to go 10k uh, and you want to soak up the atmosphere of a town centre event then Oswestry 10k will, will, will offer that and with your cycling um, the furthest distance we do is 71 miles with the midnight ride but if you want to go a little bit less uh, with pedal the borders then that's 61 miles so they're all achievable distances um, as I say there's training plans to follow and um, yeah, if anybody's got any questions, I'm, I'm happy to, to help with guiding or, or you know, advising um, 
people that are considering our events. So, you know, there's something for everybody, but everything is achievable. Um, our hashtag is challenge yourself. Uh, you know, nothing, um, nothing is, is given, you, um, given to you for free uh, in terms of, um, you know, it's not an easy um, sort of event, easy events to do. They're, they've all got a challenge aspect to it. So, yeah. It's, uh, and you've mentioned, you've mentioned three charities along the way. So, so there, there was Lyndon Davis, there was Hope House, and, and there was the Movement Centre in Oswestry. Yeah. What, 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 what's your thinking behind um, your support of charities? What, 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 why? Yeah, I think it's good to, to, to support the three different charities. Um, they're all um, very important to this community and to the wider community. People come to this area for care and help, uh, and it's important that we support them. Um, we give them, you know, uh, as much financial support as we can. We give them free places uh, for some of their communities. Um, and it's just a, a big part of what I've been passionate about before Adrenaline Sport and Events was, was even founded. Uh, I've raised um, thousands of pounds myself and, 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 you know, I've really enjoyed that, that, that sort of uh, pathway. Um, so it's important to us. Uh, we want to support them and uh, we want them involved in what we do. So, yeah, it's, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. So we've, we've got a really good CSR programme here at ACO. We've got, we've got an active, um, in, engaged team here. You know, we, we talked about the 10K already. Uh, I've seen with the events that you're putting on that, that there are team options as well. And, and, you know, with the added benefit of, of, of these funds going back to, back to the charities. Yeah. So it's a really good opportunity for su some engagement within not only the, pers the, the, the private community but also in the business community to get involved and raise money for some of these, some of these organisations yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. And without that community of, of, of local businesses, we couldn't really operate. Um, the support in, in some cases is overwhelming. Um, you know, we, we try to give them uh, the best brand exposure. We try to get their staff involved, which obviously helps with mental health health and well-being. Um, obviously a fitter person is someone that potentially works a little bit harder and has um, the capability to um, you know, be healthier around the business. So the business support side of what we, what we do is, is really, really important. So we've got many uh, business partners. Uh, some have logos on medals, some have logos on the finish and start line. Um, so we try and you know, build in a package that can sort of work for, for, for businesses as well. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you, Alan. My pleasure. Thank you for looking after us. Well, so with, with uh, six events um, and, and events for multiple disciplines of ages and, and varying, um, varying experience, really, that there's something there for everyone. So, yeah, get out there and, and get on it. It was great to hear from Alan Lewis uh, about adrenaline sporting events and how far he's come over the last seven years since starting the organisation. This year they're supporting some really great charities and hosting some really great events. In 2019 I had the pleasure of taking part in the Oswestry 10k. Having never run a 10k event before it was a great challenge and one I'd recommend that everyone get involved in. If you are interested in putting yourself forward for one of the events Alan mentioned in his interview please visit Adrenaline Sports and Events website which you can now see at the bottom of the screen. Now it's time for us to answer one of your frequently asked questions and this week it is where do I fit my carbon monoxide alarm? My colleague Kieran Smith is going to guide you through the process. Where do I fit a CO alarm? CO alarms should be positioned between one and three metres of a fuel burning appliance when they are in the same room as the appliance. If the appliance is in another room or there is a flue passing through, i.e. a bedroom, then the alarm should ideally be placed at breathing height. So that's all we've got time for on this week's episode. It was great to hear from Neil and Paul talking about ACO TV in the studio, as well as hearing from Alan Lewis, the co-founder of Adrenaline Sporting Events, talking about some of the great events that are coming up this year and some of the amazing charities he's supporting. Yeah, some really great events coming up and I can't wait to be involved in some of them myself. Um, but thank you all for tuning in today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't already subscribed to ACO TV, please do, as well as following us on our social media channels. See you next week. See ya. Bye-bye.